Hey guys, so today was the first of three Bungie reveal streams. In this reveal, they went over the new activities that we'll be doing in the April update. The April update brings us back to the reef and follows the path of the Awoken after their annihilation during the battle with the Dreadnought. There are some new quests and missions to play, Prison of Elders is returning, the new light cap is 335, new gear, weapons, shaders, ships, as well as sandbox and crucible updates. There is the Blighted Chalice Strike, which features Malak as the final boss. And yes, that is the pronunciation. The strike appears to start in the Fogoth area of the Hellmouth and then moves towards the Shrine of Oryx. Malak is considered one of the next threats as a Taken leader, so you need to go take him down. Varix, once again, will be your representative in the Reef for any such quests or missions. Petra will also have a PSN exclusive mission for those on PlayStation. Yeah, yeah, I know. Also, the Winter's Run Strike is getting a year to update with a Takenified version of the Archon Priest. Anyway, as you might have guessed, Prison of Elders is returning to year two. There are two new versions, level 41, which is 260 light recommended, and level 42, which is considered the challenge version with 320 light recommended and enemies at light level 330. The level 41 version has matchmaking available and will drop items that give up to 320 light. It includes four Taken versions of boss fights and will be a mix of Taken and non-Taken encounters. If you want the big chest at the bottom after completion, this is the mode to get it in and keys are no longer required to open the big chest. The level 42 challenge of the Elders does not have matchmaking and introduces a scoring system. The challenge of the Elders card that you saw at Varix can be bought once per week per character. It works like a raid lockout. On that card, you have two sections, high score and cumulative score. Your high score is your team's total score after one completion of the new challenge Prison of Elders. I'm assuming the score that shows here will be the highest that you got that week. Your cumulative score is the total score from all completed challenge PoE runs from that week. So if you did PoE challenge mode four times, it'll add all four scores and plop it right there. To get the rewards, you need a certain amount of score. The weapon requires your team to get 30,000 points in one full run, while the armor requires 90,000 total points for the week. The weapons and armor from turning in your card can drop up to 335. Each week there are three modifiers. Two of the modifiers affect gameplay, so stuff like small arms and grounded, which were the examples in the reveal stream. The final modifier affects how many points you can earn. So for example, in the stream, headshot kills gave you bonus points. Point values start low in the first round, then increase a good amount in the second, and then again in the final third round. Individual deaths do not subtract points from your score, but if your team wipes, your score will be reset back to whatever it was at the start of the round. This is to prevent teams from just farming an easy note. This version of PoE will also feature a mix of old and new bosses. If you meet any of the point objectives on your challenge card, head to Varix and he will give you an item. There are 16 different variants of the challenge mode skull modifiers, meaning it'll be four months before we go back to the start of the rotation of the modifiers. There also appears to be a ghost drop as well. We were able to grab this screenshot of a consumed ghost after the challenge mission was complete, but that's all we have for now. So while Prison of Elders will be the place to get max light, other year two activities will get an update. For example, King's Fall Normal Mode will now drop 311 to 320 light gear, and King's Fall Hard Mode will now drop 321 to 330 light gear. Court of Oryx Tier 3 bosses will now drop up to 335 light level artifacts. The Nightfall, Heroic Strikes, Iron Banner, and Trials of Osiris will also be getting similar increases to their drops according to the April update portion of Bungie.net. By similar increases, I mean they're all probably getting a 10 light level bump. Those were the main details covered in the stream portion of the first update, so let's take a look at some more nitpicky things. First up, the sniper rewarded from Prison of Elders, first of all, is a very good sniper, second of all, comes with this. We have our two main bonuses, triple tap and spray and play, and then a third bonus activates a red chroma glow. You can see it on the weapon represented by the red circle and X, possibly turning it on or off. We didn't get to see the weapon with this glow, but something like this could be paving the way to having weapon shaders in Destiny. That being 
very heavy speculation. Something like weapon shaders like maybe we are all imagining probably wouldn't be in this update, but this is potentially a start. Next, on the website we see a titan holding a new sword. How this sword is obtained is unknown, and how it is different from the other swords is unknown. The taken shader that we've been seeing is actually a shader, seen here, but how it is earned is unknown. The ships and shaders on Varix were not in today's stream, leading people to believe that these will just be gone forever after the update. This topic will be talked about next week, but if you can buy those ships and shaders, I would get them just in case. I think that was pretty much everything from this particular reveal. Next week's reveal will cover things to earn more in depth, so if you continue to have questions on the stuff we'll actually be able to get, new gear, exotics, weapons, whatever, check back next week and hopefully I will have something for all of you. As for my thoughts, I was whelmed by what we saw. I was not overwhelmed, I was not underwhelmed, I was just right in the middle. I was not expecting anything more than what we got. I was not expecting a complete overhaul of PoE or anything drastic, some new missions, new strikes, updated PoE, that's what I was expecting, and that's exactly what we are apparently getting. Here's a huge positive. Bungie is playing around with score attack systems, which is something I know I've mentioned in the past as potentially being a hugely beneficial system to have in Destiny to add to the longevity of activities. I think score attack is a great way to get people to play activities again, mainly for the thrill of trying to max out their scores. Bungie.net will have leaderboards, according to their site, so people can compete against each other, although it would be better if said leaderboards were in the game. This creates a cool, community-wide competition, and I hope they continue to mess with score attack-based activities in the future. They can incentivize these score attacks with said leaderboards and give out cosmetic rewards based on placement. For the record, no cosmetic rewards were associated with leaderboard placement for Prison of Elders, but I think it's something that they should consider. Another positive, gear visuals look great. I've seen a bunch of pictures in-game, on Game Informer, on Bungie's website. I really like the look of the gear this time around, especially the Titan. The Titan gear looks like something out of Tron. Just, oh, so cool. On the not as positive side, there is no Skull Loss in that there is no actual final boss of Prison of Elders like Skull Loss was in year one. I was really looking forward to seeing what they were going to be able to do with a new Skull Loss, and it turns out it's nothing, nothing at all. We're actually negative Skull Loss. I also wasn't too thrilled with the difficulty. I do realize that yes, the players playing were max light, and yes, they had small arms on, which grants them double damage on primaries, but even then, it didn't look challenge mode levels of hard. However, I suppose the challenge here is trying to figure out how to max your score, not necessarily beating the mission. Also, it's Prison of Elders. Everyone would have preferred a raid, but I was not expecting a raid at this point in time, but I do expect one in the fall, so if there's not a new raid in the fall, then we may have some issues. I have a great discussion that's going up tomorrow that I did with my math class clanmates where we talked about Prison of Elders, some of the problems that it had, may continue to have, and horde modes in general that I think you guys will find interesting. It is podcast style, but I'm going to try to give both a summary of the points we talked about and the full version. It's probably one of the better conversations that we've had recently with regards to Destiny Talk. Overall thoughts continue to be cautious optimism as usual, but once again, this is exactly what I was expecting with regards to what I thought we were getting. No more, no less. I was not expecting year one raids to come back as nice as it would have been. I was not expecting private matches or anything like that. Those kind of updates, if they come, would be with a much larger, probably paid expansion. Granted, they didn't speak about private matches today and they would probably do that during the third reveal stream, but don't hold your breath. Seriously, don't. I do not expect this update to hold attention spans for five months straight or until whenever the hell the next update might be, but that's not really the intent, nor is it really possible for most of you who are watching this. Anyway, that's what I have for you guys on part one of the reveal streams. Part two will cover the stuff that we'll be getting from this update in terms of gear, weapons, exotics, whatever, and that will be posted next Wednesday. Until then, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.